If you've clicked on this video, then you're probably already active in the OpenAI Agent Swarm community. Either that, or you're an active watcher of David Shapiro, or maybe you're a software engineer or someone who's just generally interested in the field of AI at the minute. If you're one of the first two, then you might want to have a look at the technical details. I'm going to go through the contribution that I originally made to this repo and the tool making chain and how that agent works. Also, my idea behind the minimal viable agent. If you're just a software engineer or someone who's interested in the state of the art at the minute and, you know, someone who wants a taste of what these systems are going to be able to do in the near future and just how powerful they might be, then just skip to the demo section. I'm not going to waste your time. There's some crazy stuff. When I first saw what these libraries could do, it really blew me away. I think the applications here are going to be wild. Just go have a look at the demo, watch that section. You won't be disappointed. For everyone else in the first two categories, I'll just go into the next section. As a very brief recap, I'll do my best, but really for a good recap, you should go check out uh, Dave's David's videos. <clears throat> he does a really good job of explaining cognitive architectures and what the HASS framework is exactly and what the agent swarm is and how it's envisioned. I'll do my best here. It's a swarm of agents. So a swarm is just a collection of agents. And what is an agent? An agent is an intelligent entity, one that can act in its environment um, and is intelligent. The idea behind Hass is that if you get a collection of intelligent agents together and give them a task, they should be able to autonomously complete tasks in accordance to achieving their main goal, whatever that might be, making some system more efficient, uh, fixing global warming or climate change or um, making the best email service that's ever been created. Whatever it is, they have some task and they're trying to complete it. There is some basic governance structure, something called a Supreme Oversight Board or SOB. That is basically like your main board of core agents, your CTO, your CEO, if you want to think of it that way. Maybe an agent that makes sure that every agent in the swarm adheres to some ethical policy. These are the high level alignment agents. And then they'll be able to spin up other agents below them that are more task uh, or goal oriented that will try to solve specific problems by acting in the environment. My first contribution to this repo is now under a section called Toolmaker, and it's the Unit Manager. And this is my attempt at defining what an agent should look like in its most basic form. I go through a description here, but there's something you should understand about the agents first. So in the OpenAI Playground, you can make an assistant. An assistant can have a name. The instructions is basically how it should behave. It's its directive, its goal, its mission. You can put anything here and you can run a model, but also you can include some tools. One of them is the functions tools. Now the intention behind this tool is that if you're integrating an assistant into an API, you can tell the assistant that a function exists in the API that it can call by specifying the name, as well as a JSON schema for how that function should be interacted with. The important part here is the properties, which are the input arguments to the function. When an assistant knows it can call a function at any point during a natural language conversation, it can take a break and say to the backend system, hey, run this function, give me the result. Now that's important because we can do something quite fun here. So let's think about a minimum viable agent. What should it do? There's some interface which can communicate in natural language. The assistant exists in a thread, which is basically some chat history. and in my use case, although this isn't the ultimate goal, this is with a human in the loop. Now, when the human wants the assistant to do something on their machine, the assistant normally would say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm just a large language model. I don't have access to your machine. <laughs> well, guess what? Well, this time you actually do. Because what we can do is specify an assistant called a tool creator that has one function defined to begin with. That function is the function request. It is a single function that tells the assistant you can request a function and all you need to do is provide a description of the function and a name for the function and a JSON schema for the input arguments. That is all. So at any point a user can say make a function to do XYZ. The assistant will go let me request that function. It will call the back end and then the backend will in turn call another assistant 
which is responsible for writing and saving that function into a known location, basically creating a dynamic API at runtime for the assistant to call. I'll show you just what this is capable of in a minute. I call this part the extension to the assistant. When the assistant says, hold on a minute user, let me do something for you on the back end, but we use another assistant to perform the back end task. This whole loop of calling the back end and making an assistant complete some task, I call an extension. What I'm about to show is an example of a function writing assistant. So here I am in the code base. Let me delete everything I did in my last session. Let's have a look at the readme. The bit that's interesting is right here. Make sure you have an API key set up, how to run the unit manager pi file, exactly like this, and a brief description of what you should expect. Now, to actually show you how this works, here is an example from me, my Python interpreter, dash m, dash m, running the file as a module. And then instead of using slashes, we're using dots here. And instead of putting dot pi on the end, we leave it blank. We run this and this will run the chat loop. Some initialization of agents and now type. I'm going to use part of a conversation I made earlier. You're an autonomous agent with the capability to request tools, request a function to estimate pi using Monte Carlo and endpoints. This was a nice idea from one of the original contributors who did an early prototype of this. They used this function as a demonstration example for their piece of code. I'll flash their name on the screen now for transparency and recognition purposes. So I run this and with the infrastructure that I've built, the assistant's going to go away, use its function request capability here, and it's going to request a new function. And now it's going to pass that on to our extension, our behind the scenes assistant. And that's going to write us a Python function right here. Perfect. So let's have a look. Now we should go back to us to provide an extra command. But it's taking its time for some reason. It's not always this slow, but sometimes it gets caught up in a little thinking loop and it doesn't know what to do next. But this should really come back to me at any time now. Ugh. Okay, it just froze. It appears you submit an empty prompt. How can I submit you further? Submit you? Assist you further. Um, calculate pi with... Mm, 100, 1,000, and 10,000 points. And now, the extension made the Python file the assistant knows that it has a function now to call and it knows the JSON schema to call it with, which is here. This part was not added by me. This was a follow-up extension of my original work um, by another collaborator who I will also flash on the screen now for transparency and recognition, of course. We love recognition. Here we go. It called the API dynamically and returns us our results. Now that's really cool, but we can push this further and you're going to see now why this gets really interesting. Request a function to run commands in the CMD windows, uh, include returns and error handling. And so now it's going to request that function for us. <laughs> You can probably see where I'm going with this, or more specifically, where the assistant's going with this. Right now, the assistant or the extension is in the process of writing the function. It's going to populate it to our dynamic API area. Here we have it. Print my current directory. Directory. Here we go, it's running the command. The current directory is, and that is the real directory on my computer. Fnotes, MySpace, OpenAI, Agent Swarm. If I come up to when I ran this program to begin with, Fnotes, MySpace, OpenAI, Agent Swarm. That is where we are. What files are in that directory? 
and it just knows that it should use the command prompt to get that information. And so it calls the command prompt, provides an input argument. <laughs> Here we go, it now returns the answer. Git ignore, some different files, their sizes, uh, some other directories, and an overall space on the drive. That is really, really good. Request a function to stream my webcam to my screen. Let's see if it can do this. This one will take a little longer, not necessarily to write, but definitely to run because I've tested this before. So here I am back again, and it's made the function. So let's call it stream my webcam. I'm not telling it to run the function. I'm not reminding it that it exists. I'm, I'm just telling it the task that I want. I've told it that I want it to make a function for the task. And then later on, I'm just saying, do that task now. And it knows that it can call the function to do the task. So if I have a look it approached the problem using CV2, that makes a lot of sense. Here's its function. Perfect. It returns if there's an error, but nothing else. Here we go. That's me. I didn't do anything. I just said stream my webcam to my monitor. And there we go. And I have pushed this. I have tested how far this goes. Uh, I've made it make applications that real time stream the waveform of my microphone. And it can do that. Uh, I'm going to say request a function to open my default browser on a URL, a generic URL, whatever. But I've pushed this. You can make it navigate your directories, you can make it read files, although if you make it read large files that does get expensive on the API cost side of things. You can make it write files. Anything that you can think of that you can do programmatically, you can make this agent do. Open github. Uh, open github.com. And I've run it. My mouse is in the middle of my screen. There you go. It's open GitHub. That is indeed my GitHub right there. So hopefully you get an idea of just how powerful this is. We can really do anything here. You can make a function to pip install. When it writes a function and it says, sorry, there was an error, just ask it to pip install. Whatever the error was, whatever the module is that you're missing. When it says, sorry, that function didn't work, just ask it to re-request the function. If you need to have a look at the function and tell it what it did wrong, do. But ideally, you can push it to problem solve on its own and it will go a long way. For me, the next interesting step is to say, can we get two of these agents working together? Maybe rather than having just a function writer on its own, can we have a function writer and one that uh, requests the creation of group chats for multiple agents to talk with each other, um, or one that creates documents or graphs specifically, you know, a d data scientist agent versus a function writer agent, maybe some kind of admin agent. Really the possibilities here are endless. This is just the beginning and I think we're going to see some really crazy things. Um, anything you can do on your computer, on your system, this can do. I just wanted to come in with a final prediction here and say some people will get really scared about this and when I demonstrated this at my work, um, there were definitely some mixed feelings. A lot of it was just shock. Some of it was laughter. Uh, a significant portion of it was, I've spent years learning to write code and training to be a software engineer. What does this mean exactly? And we talked about it as a team afterwards and I'm not entirely sure, no one can predict the future. But what I will say is I think it's gonna become increasingly likely that a lot of really complex things are gonna be doable by these agents but they make mistakes, they need oversight, and you still need good overall software experience to know the right questions to ask and to push the model and to recognize when it's made mistakes and give it sp specific guidance, I would say, when it's struggling to fix things. But it's much more likely that what's gonna happen is we're probably going to lean more towards the architectural side as engineers and leave the implementation more and more to the hands of automation. That's just my prediction, but I'm not scared yet, but I am excited to see just how far this technology goes. And it wasn't that long ago that we had GPT-3 and GPT-4 blew that out of the water. And now we have GPT-4 as an API. 
I really don't know what to expect next year or the year after.